in this episode of my Houseplant Care 101 series, I'm going to be sharing everything you need to know to take care of your cacti. Now I'm going to be talking about desert cacti, but also jungle cacti as well. Now, as you guys know, I love my foliage houseplants, but I adore cacti. I just think they are the coolest types of plants. I mean, there are so, so many. There's like thousands of varieties. They're just one of my absolute favorite types of plants. I'll be going over watering, lighting, when to repot, correct soil, type of pot, temperature, and fertilizing requirements. Now, if you want to go to a specific section of the video, I have included timestamps in my description below, and I'll also be repotting some of these cute little guys during the episode too. So if you have any questions about repotting, I'll be covering all of that as well. This House Plant Care 101 series is sponsored by repotme.com. With RepotMe, you can have all of your houseplant supplies delivered right to your door. They are a one-stop shop for all of your houseplant, orchid, or succulent needs. They have custom handmade houseplant soils ranging from orchid soil, philodendron, monstera, peace lilies, cacti, succulents, and more. They also have lots of different pots, including my favorite clear slotted orchid pots that I cannot live without, amazing houseplant fertilizers, and so much more. I have included their link in my description below for you, and you can also get 10% off any potting soil with my code Ashley. Now, one of the things that I find is really interesting to know is that cacti Cacti are actually a type of succulent that have just really gone above and beyond to be able to adapt to extremely, extremely harsh conditions. Now, even though cacti are a type of succulent, they have their own specific needs that I'll be going over in this episode that are really important to know. Now, most succulents have like big juicy leaves, right? Well, cacti obviously don't have that. They've been modified and adapted so that they store water in their stems and their spines are actually modified leaves that have just changed and adapted over time and the spines actually do serve a purpose. Obviously it helps deter against pests or animals that are coming around and want to nibble on the plant. Spines deter them. Um, they also help promote airflow and they also can help provide some shade to the plant. Now there are two different types of cactus. You have your desert cactus and your jungle cactus. Desert cactus are the ones that we are mainly used to seeing and these are the ones that are adapted to desert conditions, really arid climates, and they're usually globular like this or columnar columnar, columnar. Anyways, also quickly want to mention that I am including Euphorbia in with the desert cactus bunch. Um, Euphorbia are completely different than cacti actually, but they look very, very similar. And a lot of people will call Euphorbia cacti. Um, but for this purpose, if you have a Euphorbia that looks a lot like a cactus, the its needs are very similar to a desert cactus, including the soil, including the watering, um, as long as it really looks like a cactus. So I can do another episode talking about the differences between cactus and euphorbia if you guys are interested in that. Just leave it in the comments below if you want me to do a video on that. So here we have a forest or jungle cactus, and these are adapted to rainforest conditions. That's normally where you would find them in like a type of rainforest. And you'll see these growing up on the sides of trees and they're usually epiphytic. Other types of forest and jungle cactus are orchid cactus, Easter cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, Christmas cactus, but these have very different uh, needs than the desert cacti. So I'll be going over both of the needs of desert and jungle for each of the topics that I mentioned that we'll be covering. If you're not sure what kind of cactus you have, whether it's desert or jungle, definitely recommend Googling it because you will want to adjust your care routine based around the type of cactus that you have. All right, so first up is watering, which is probably the most important thing when it comes to caring for cacti. And your watering schedule is really going to depend on the season. Cacti have a great growing season during the summer months, but then in the winter they tend to go dormant and it's actually good for the plant to go dormant during the winter because it can kind of store up that energy. So first up during the growing months, uh, for desert cacti, how you want to water them. Surprisingly, it's every one to two weeks you want to give these guys a good drink. Now you just want Want to make sure that the soil is completely dry when you are watering your desert cactus because they can be very prone to root rot. So obviously in the desert they're uh, in very sandy, dry soil and 
you don't want them to get root rot because they're very prone to that and it's the easiest way to kill a cactus but they do appreciate a really good drink once a week when the soil is dried out that was very surprising to me when i first started um, collecting cacti i was really wondering what was wrong with my plants and they're all shriveled up and suffering and it's because i wasn't giving them enough water so they will grow quite a bit um, in the summer months. So if you're like me when I first started out and I was very, very nervous to overwater my cactus, really simple tips. First, make sure the soil's dry. If you're not sure and you don't want to use your finger because these guys can be pretty pokey, uh, just use a moisture meter. That's very, very helpful. And then the next thing you can do is if you're still not sure is if the cactus is looking a little wrinkly, a little pruney, that usually means that it's pretty thirsty and ready for a drink. So during the winter months when the plant is dormant, I would withhold water except for once a month maybe if the soil's dry the plants looking thirsty oh side note you might see some ladybugs <laughs> on my plants in the video and uh, it's because I have some ladybugs in the room they're helping me with my thrips outbreak so I buy a bunch of them on Amazon and then I just stick them in the room and they're kind of helping in, in addition to a lot of other stuff I'm doing so if you see them, that's what's going on. Now for jungle cacti and forest cacti, what you wanna do for watering is very different than desert. So these guys actually do appreciate quite a bit of water. Now they are growing up the sides of trees, so the soil needs to be specific, but they do enjoy a good drink, especially during the growing months. So I wouldn't wait until the soil's completely dry on these. I would water them when the soil is at least halfway dry or mostly dry. Um, but if these are left for too long without watering, then they'll get very puckery and, and they won't grow as much, especially the ones that you see like the Easter cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, those guys are thirsty. Um, the Ripsalis are usually um, a little bit not as thirsty as like the holiday cactus varieties. But again, it's just experimenting and they're really great too, just like the other cacti, you know, they will start to look a little shrivelly and kind of show you when they are very thirsty. Um, this is another type of Ripsalis and I'm not sure the variety, but it was sent to me from a viewer and I've had it for so long just growing in this water and it's putting out all of this new growth and it's doing um, surprisingly well. Similar to a desert cactus, your jungle cactus will go dormant during the winter months, um, which is actually really good for it because it can store up the energy, you know, for when it flowers. Um, not the Ripsalis so much, but like the holiday cactus and stuff they they like to go dormant and store up their energy for the growing months so they can put out beautiful blooms which is one of the things that we love about the holiday cactus so i would give it some good water maybe once a month or twice a month for those you know if it starts to get a little bit looking dehydrated to go ahead and give it a good drink but it definitely won't be as much as you watered it um, as you did during the growing season. Next up is lighting and this is hugely important when we're talking about cacti. Um, if you want the healthiest desert cactus that you can get definitely give it lots of light and it can handle quite a bit of light actually. Now there it could be at risk of sunburn if it's getting blasting sun and it's not used to it but it really does enjoy bright light, um, you know, and it can handle good light throughout pretty much the entire day. So a nice south facing window would be exactly what your cactus would love. Now jungle cacti are entirely different and I really always like to recommend trying to give your plant as close to its natural habitat as possible. So these guys are going to be in pretty much all day sun, right? But the jungle cactus, like I mentioned, they like to live on the sides of trees. So they really get filtered light and filtered bright light. Um, you know, they're under the canopy, they're getting the dappled light. So these guys appreciate light, but not too much. They don't want super bright light. Um, I know that some of them can actually burn, but they still are cacti and they still appreciate some nice light. I mean, these are not going to be your low light plants. Um, I did read that they can go down to even medium light, um, but for the healthiest plant where you want like lots of new growth coming out, definitely bright and direct light is probably a good idea for these guys. Not all of us have bright blasting light in our homes and that is totally fine. I am a huge, huge fan of supplemental lighting. As you can see, I have like a totally lit up uh, area behind me with grow lights. I have them downstairs. You can find really inexpensive supplemental lighting on Amazon or you can go up to like the really great grow lights. Um, that one light bulb can just service like a whole area, but 
10 out of 10 recommend any kind of supplemental lighting, especially when it comes to these guys if you don't have enough light in your home. Next up is temperature, and I just briefly wanted to mention this, as it's pretty much the same for both desert and jungle cacti. Of course, they prefer it to be warm, right, because that's what they're used to in their natural habitat. However, during the winter months, they can usually withstand cooler temperatures. As I always say, if, the, if your house is comfortable for you, it's probably comfortable for your plants as well. I would would recommend though if you live in an area that has very cold winters to pull your plants away not just your cacti but all your plants away from the window um, you don't want them to be touching up against the window or directly on top of it because it could be you know difficult for your plant to deal with that just like that would be uncomfortable for us to be you know pushed up against that but for the most part they're going dormant during those winter months so they're okay on the cooler temperatures as long as it's something that you would be comfortable with your plant should be comfortable with that as well and then during the summer months I mean as warm as you can get it it's like it would make these plants super super happy a lot of people put their cacti outside during the summer months and they just absolutely love that and will thrive so cacti are a really fun plant that you can really have no matter where you live you can you can enjoy um, having a cactus in your home so let's get into the fun part which is repotting i've been withholding um, repotting some of these cacti because i was saving it for this video but i'm like itching to get my finger on some of these little cuties um, so important to know is when is the right time to repot these guys now cacti don't need to be repotted as often as philodendrons and anthurium and other types of plants because cacti usually don't have as a expansive of a root system. They're usually pretty shallow as far as the root system goes. So as a general rule, the best time to repot is if you see a lot of the roots coming out the bottom or coming out of the top. I mean, then it's a pretty good idea to repot it. Um, also, if the soil is really old and you're putting water in it and you feel like it's just not retaining any moisture whatsoever, which can happen because these guys really only need to be repotted once every like two to four years or something like that. Um, so the soil can become somewhat compacted and the water just flows right through. Uh, then what you can do is not necessarily repot it into a different planter, keep it in the same planter and just put brand new soil in there for it. Um, your cactus would probably really appreciate that, just giving it a little TLC. And from what I've read, jungle cacti don't necessarily want to be repotted uh, as often as other tropical plants as well, although maybe a little bit more often than say a desert cactus, just because they have a more type of established root system usually. Jungle cacti are also usually faster growing than desert cacti, which means that the root system is faster growing as well. All right, so let's talk about planters. Now, I've done a lot of experimenting with different planters, and as you guys know, I like to put my plants in a nursery pot, and then I like to put the nursery pot in a cover pot so that I can experiment with different cover pots and use it for decorating. And I was a little nervous to do that with cacti uh, because they really can be prone to root rot. And I typically just use terracotta pots. So let's talk about terracotta pots really quick. These are a great, great option. Terracotta clay are fabulous for any kind of cactus, whether it's desert or jungle, because what they do is they wick away any additional moisture. They help prevent overwatering. They're absolutely fabulous. Just make sure that there is um, drainage holes on the bottom. You can find them in like really cute colors. You can paint them. Um, you can usually find them for really cheap prices. Um, but if you're planting them directly into terracotta pots, I mean, it's a little difficult to tell if it needs water because these are, are pretty heavy. So if you pick it up, it'll be somewhat difficult to tell. Also, if it comes down to repotting, a lot of times you'll have to crack and break the terracotta. You can't squish the terracotta to try to get the plant out. They're still fabulous though. 10 out of 10 recommend using any kind of terracotta. But if you wanna go a different route and you're like me and you love using nursery pots, Again, you know, I love talking about the slotted orchid pots. These work great for cacti. I was a little bit nervous because they're plastic and plastic typically, plastic and cacti typically don't go together because the plastic doesn't breathe and it can 
become waterlogged, but these don't have that problem because there's literally so many holes and so much airflow all around the sides. It's because they're orchid pots. They need all of that airflow around the roots. Um, so these are perfect, perfect for cacti because these are epiphytic too, epiphytic. Um, and even desert cacti, it works absolutely wonderfully. And these are from repommy.com, as I mentioned. All right, I'm just gonna set some of these down so I have some space to do repotting. Can we take a moment to appreciate this beautiful astrophytum? It's my favorite type of cacti. There's so many varieties. They are literally so incredibly beautiful. It looks like artwork and it takes years and years and years for them to get big like that. Here's another type of astrophytum. I'm completely obsessed with these types of plants. This one I got for $10. I did get some astrophytum seeds and they were growing so, so well, but when I moved, they died because I forgot about them and they didn't get enough light. I was so bad, but I might try to grow them again. This is a cool pine cone one. This is a euphorbia snowflake. This is a spiralis. Sorry, I don't know how we got into a cactus tour, but I'm almost done. Um, then we have paper spine, because the spines look like paper. Do you love this pot so much? I know. <laughs> I love it so much. I got it from Cactus Club. I think it's a type of peanut cactus, like a yellow peanut cactus. You see the little baby cacti coming out the side of that thing. Another astrophytum, so beautiful. This one is spineless. You either want to go one inch bigger or maybe two inch maximum bigger. But if you're using the correct soil, you should be totally fine, which I'll be covering that as well. And it's the same thing for the jungle cacti. You wanna go one size to two sizes bigger. Again, sometimes your cactus may need repotting and it'll just need new soil and not even need a bigger pot. So you can assess that when you're looking at it and decide what you, decide what you think. So I think I'm gonna use these three little pots for this guy. I don't have repot me pots that are small enough and I kind of think it's cute with these three little ones. So next up is soil and this is arguably the most important thing besides watering to get right because uh, it can greatly impact the health of your cacti. So both soils do have a lot in common. It needs to be well draining. Both plants really don't like to have any kind of waterlogged soil. So first off the bat, you definitely want to use some sort of cactus potting mix or succulent potting mix. Today I'm going to be using the repotme.com potting mix. As I mentioned, they have all different types of soil on their website and they're customized for the type of plant that you have. So I'm completely hooked, but you can also make your own soil as well. I would just suggest if you are using a potting mix as your base to really make sure you, you use at least 50% pumice, perlite, throw in some sand as well so that it's like you pour the water in and it's super well draining. That's very, very important. Now, as I mentioned sand, you'll wanna put sand in with your desert cactus for sure because these plants prefer, you know, that's what they're used to, right? They're used to those, that sandy, rocky soil. These would be fine if you were making your own soil and you weren't using you making it for desert cacti as well. You could just use orchid bark or something like that, again, because these will be climbing up you know, the sides of trees. However, this cactus and succulent mix has all the right stuff in there and I'm gonna use it for both plants. So if you're curious what you want your soil to look like, you want it to look like this. Very rocky, super well draining, lots of different stuff in there. Um, and then you can also see in this one that there is some sand in there as well. Now these guys aren't going to be that difficult to repot because they're little, but it can be challenging to have a big cactus and repot it just from the spines, obviously. I've seen people get really creative with what they use. Um, I've seen people use tongs to help lift it out, newspaper, big gloves. I usually have my potting mat, but I didn't set it up this time, I forgot. Here's the first one repotted. This is a stenocactus hastatus. So this is an interesting one. This is a Euphorbia globosa, I think. All of this is all brand new growth. See, their root systems are really delicate. Look how cute this one is. He's gonna love his new soil so much. Last one. This is a fellow cactus, Rinconensens. How cute are these three? I think I'm gonna put them in my kitchen on the windowsill. It gets super bright morning light and they're gonna absolutely love that. All right, so next up is fertilizing. And this is a really, really important thing to cover when it comes to cacti because yes, 
It is important to fertilize cacti. I hear people say, no, you don't need to. Yes, you do. But in my experience, it is important. These are plants and they need nutrients to grow and they're only getting nutrients from what's provided in the soil. But there are definitely some things to keep in mind. First of all, whatever fertilizer you decide to use, wherever you get it from, synthetic or organic, just make sure that it says for cacti on there. You wanna make sure that it has the right ratio. You know, cacti, it's important for them to have maybe a little bit more phosphorus and less nitrogen than say houseplants, which I usually recommend for houseplants, a balanced ratio formula in the fertilizer. So like a 10, 10, 10 or 5, 5, 5. That's not the case with cacti. It needs to be customized for them. So again, it doesn't matter where you get it from. I like the Repot Me fertilizers. They have synthetic and organic. They're absolutely amazing. I've had a ton of success with them. Also really important to note that they don't need to be fertilized as often and only, only during the growing season. You do not want to fertilize them during the winter months. Um, even if you're seeing a little bit of growth in the winter months, hold off on fertilizing them as opposed to houseplants if they're putting out a lot of growth in the winter. I'm always like, yeah, give them some at half strength. Not so much with cacti. Um, only during the growing months and during the growing months maybe once a month where with my other plants I'm like fertilizing them every time I water them sometimes but not with cacti. Um, they definitely would not appreciate that. As far as fertilizing, my understanding is that jungle cacti have basically the same needs as the desert cacti. Now, a lot of the jungle cacti do flower, like the Easter cacti, but still use a cactus fertilizer and don't fertilize them during the dormant months. And they also don't appreciate being over fertilized. So once a month, maybe twice a month if you're seeing a lot of flowering going on. Um, but that's it. Like I wouldn't go crazy with the fertilizing. I'd always use it sparingly. And then it's super important with fertilizer to always start at half strength, no matter what you think. Like at the beginning of the growing season, the first time you fertilize, make sure it's at half strength. The other important thing to note is if you've repotted your cacti, don't fertilize. Give it a few months to get used to being in its planter, to get adjusted, and then fertilize. That's super important. It likes to kind of get established in its new home before it gets fertilized. So I always love it when you guys leave comments with your suggestions and your helpful tips. It's so, so great, not just for myself, but for everybody that watches these care videos. I find myself going back to watching these videos and going through and I'm like reading the comments um, because I learned so much from all of you as well. Now, if you'd like to see future plant videos show up in your newsfeed, make sure to subscribe. I don't just do care videos. I do lots of plant shopping videos. I'm a crazy plant lady and proud. So I usually post about once or twice a week, always good vibes, good planty content. And we also have a really wonderful community on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. You'll definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.